Good morning. Let's move together and, and build this consciousness of unity and growth as we take this prescription for spiritual alignment together. We are aligned with the presence of God within. We are protected by God's love, wisdom, knowledge, and grace. The God consciousness within helps us discover more about who we are. Thank you, God, for the gift of spiritual intuition. Thank you, God, for aligning our conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to an alignment of our conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds for the year. At the end of every year, those students who are involved with the Center for Enlightenment get together and work on these seven steps for releasing the new year. And in the last several years, I think maybe the last 10 years, Jane has encouraged us to start with the fourth step of the seven steps as we do this work, because that's the most difficult step. That's the one that is the one that it's harder to get over the hump. And that is the step of disappointments and difficulties. And you'll be able to find in the chat room link if you're watching live or on the website on handouts under media, you're going to find the questions that we're going to be using this week and for the next several weeks as we have this alignment, this realignment of our beingness, of our soul, the realignment of our conscious, subconscious and superconscious mind. And we do this by getting all of the old rancid thought energy freed up from the subconscious mind so that the superconscious light, the light of spirit, the light of our higher self can flow into consciousness, our conscious mind. That's how that works. And so this morning, we're going to work with the seven steps. And in your spiritual power tools book, there's a wonderful illustration of a vision that Jane Hart had back in 1967 of seven golden steps. In her, her vision, these were made out of solid gold. And on each step, she saw a different title, a different phrase. And this was in answer to a prayer that she prayed. She'd been sitting out in her garden. Her mother had just died a few days earlier and she was feeling empty. Her beautiful spring garden, which had always given her so much joy, just didn't do it for her. And she felt everything was gray, not in color. It was um, subdued. There, there was just something wrong. And she knew that she wasn't able to come back alive again until she could release her mom. But she didn't know how to do any grieving work. She didn't have a counselor. She didn't have any books on the subject. It's 1967. And so she prayed a prayer and she asked, help me, help me with this grief that I'm holding on to, this old energy, this, these feelings that I, I feel about my mom so that I can come alive again. And as she sat in meditation, she had what she said was her first visionary experience of these seven steps. And you can find these seven steps and I'm not going to read to you what they're all about here. But on each of these steps, there was a different phrase. And uh, the next morning, she woke up thinking everything was well because she saw the visionary experience. And that must mean she was all better and she didn't feel any different. And it came to her in, in meditation that she needed to journal each of these seven steps and release her mom. And as she did that, she and it took a few days, she felt a lightning. Uh, a new vibrancy and a new life, but she had to go in there and really 
feel the feelings that were buried there in her subconscious mind, in her iceberg under the surface of her consciousness. And as she did so, she felt better and better until one morning she got up and she looked out in her garden and there was a rose blossoming where she'd never planted a rose. And her mother's middle name was Rose. And she knew it was a sign. And this, believe it or not, she went back out the next day in the garden and the rose had disappeared. It was a sign to her that she had really come on to something. And she's passed this on to you and to me, not just for grieving, but for, and we've talked about this, if you're selling a house or you're leaving a job or changing in a relationship, if your kids are going into kindergarten or you, I myself take myself up the seven steps at least a half dozen times a year. You can use this tool for any number of things, but here at the end of the year, we always use this tool to release the year that's passed so that we can clean the deck, so we can clean the slate and move into the year to come. And what's there waiting for you in this year to come? Well, wonderful things, but you change those outcomes as you do the seven step work. You change the outcomes of the year to come as you release the year that has passed. Are you ready to change these outcomes? Would you like to have better outcomes? outcomes in this year to come and experience not just the same old, same old, but something new and different, something fresh. Well, the way to do that is to release all of the old, what we call rancid thought energy, rancid thought forms, that stuck energy that stuck there in the events over the past year. And I've taken her class on this maybe a dozen times, and I've taught it myself maybe 20 times. And I've done this process for the last 25 years. What I find is that it clears the deck. It opens the space and it creates a whole new experience for the year to come. It also helps me to take stock of where I have been so that I don't repeat the things that I don't want to repeat, but also so that I can appreciate the things and really get all the goodness out of the year. As Jane has often said, you want to squeeze the lemon and get all the juice out of it. And that's both the positive and the negative juice out of it so that you can be free, so that you can move forward. This is a, a powerful method. I used to start with the first step, but about 10 years ago, Jane suggested that we start with the fourth step. And this step is disappointments and difficulties. Now, if you don't have the questions in front of you, it's okay because I'm going to speak them aloud and you can write them down. And I'm going to suggest that in this moment that you go out and get yourself some paper and a pen or pencil, whatever would work for you, enough so that you can write more than a couple of lines. Uh, for me, I like to use something like this, but get a fair amount of room on and, and more than one page of paper so that you can do this process, which we're going to do about halfway through the class, because we're going to actually, this isn't going to be just a passive experience of listening to somebody lecturing you. This is going to be going in and doing the work yourself. Now, I know you may, might be like me in that I don't like to journal. I always have resistance to journaling. It's not as bad as it used to be, but I still have that initial feeling of, oh, it's an effort. It's kind of like going out in the snow and you got to put your boots on and you got to put your park on. But you find that if you'll put your boots and park on, going out into the snow is a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> and so journaling actually prepares you for what's coming up and it helps you to release those things that you're holding in your subconscious mind. What kind of year would you like next year? We're actually going to set up the conditions in which you're into which you're going to move in this coming year through the work that you do today. Now, this last year has had so many things for us. I know that many of us have dealt with the planetary health issues that have been so to the forefront of our consciousness. And there's a lot of disappointments and difficulties, things that we were unable to do, feelings of limitation maybe anger and resentment at people who think differently than we do about this thing. 
uh, it, there, political ramifications. Um, oh gosh, there's so many different issues that this brings up. And I want to encourage you to put them all down on paper today. So as I'm speaking here, if you haven't got your paper and pen, go grab it. I'm going to keep talking, but that's okay. This is going to be archived on YouTube so you can listen to it. But we're going to start with that disappointments and difficulties step to get the ball rolling, to really release that negative energy that comes up. And then you can add every week something to this experience we are going to have for this week. What I suggest is that you do the work today to get it started. And this will take care of some of your resistance as well. You're not going to feel as resistant because you've already got the, the, the process begun. And then every day, add something to it. Go into the same sheets of paper. And, and you can tell by my different colors, ink, um, I added things. I already started this a week ago. And you add something every day. And then as you do the next steps, which we're going to go through, um, go back and look and revisit the earlier steps and add to those. This can be a spontaneous and flowing and powerful journey that you go on over the next four weeks so that you can really release this past year. Everything in your life is energy. Everything is composed of vibration and energy. And what we're doing here is going into that vibration and energy and changing the quality of it by changing the thoughts, the beliefs that that energy is attached to. Energy, as they say, is impersonal. It's neither positive nor negative. It just is. But if you've got your energy attached to some negative memory, some disappointment, or some difficulty, that energy is stuck there. It's frozen there like in an iceberg. And as you free up that energy, what you end up with is a more energetic life, more aliveness, a uh, greater sense of flow, and a much higher vibration rate and higher consciousness. Now, as I was working on this this last uh, week or so, I was working on this fourth step. And what I found was, first, I went through my calendar. I pulled my calendar out. This may work for you. And I looked at all the different uh, things that happened. And I realized, I remembered that we had to put our dog down this year. That was a big part of the year because he represented not just the loving relationship with that beautiful animal, that, that, that cherished pet, but also all of the events that he symbolized, the, the fact that it was a birthday present for my daughter when she was 10, and the childhood of the children, and the fact that they've moved out and graduated and gone on and they're in college. And so many things that it brought up. You see, every thought's attached to another thought. And as you go into a free-flowing journaling exercise, you're going to find that so much is going to be revealed in your subconscious mind, and it'll be added to each day. I had surgery this past year, and I was actually getting over some surgery at the beginning of the year. So I had to release that and all of the things that that represented for me. But what I found as I did this work, as I did this journaling, was something that totally surprised me. Because you'll find that as you journal, you will actually get messages from your higher self. And I found myself writing, what I'm really letting go of is my false identity as a spiritual student. You see, and I'm not going to go too deeply into it, I held a weird ego identity that I didn't even know was there about being the spiritual student who's got to do everything right. It's very much a perfectionist and wanted to be uh, attaining things as opposed to simply being and growing and, and, and flowing in spontaneity. And I didn't even know it was in there. Oh, I kind of did intellectually. But as I did my journaling, I feel such a lightness and such a freedom. And I know that that freedom has only just begun. You'll find that as you release the thoughts that have energy and these negative thought forms that are clothed with the emotional energy that's stuck there within them, you'll find that they have been sitting in your subconscious mind. That vibration has been holding you back. 
but you can never take the old into the new. As it says in the scriptures, you can never put new wine or new spiritual energy into old wineskins or old thought patterns, old belief systems. And you can't, I'm going to paraphrase that, you can't put new wine into old wineskins. It's you can't put 2002, you can't put new wine into old wineskins. You can't put 2002 into 2001's wineskins. It's a new opportunity for you to change your life. And if you want to take every opportunity that's available to you, you've got to start here and now and take responsible for your subconscious mind. As we've been studying, 90% of your consciousness is within the the subconscious mind, beneath the surface of that conscious barrier between the conscious mind and the subconscious. So you aren't going to be going on automatic anymore. You're going to bring these things into the light of awareness and set them free and how powerful and how freeing that's going to be. And in so doing, you're going to let go of retribution and self-criticism. You're going to put down the hammer because one of the resistances that I've had to doing my disappointments and difficulties journaling is that I think, oh, I'm going to see all these things I don't like about myself. But actually what I do is I put, I take pen and paper and I take the things that I'm holding on to and I put them on to the paper with the pen and they're out of my subconscious mind and I can put down the hammer and give myself some breathing room. If you'll work with the rest of us over the next week with this fourth step, disappointments and difficulties, I promise you, you're going to have an entirely new experience not only of the year to come, but also of your memories of the year in the past. You're going to do your forgiveness work. You're going to be doing the work of releasing that energy. But all it's going to cost you is some ink. It's free, but you got to write it down on the paper. And we're going to be doing meditation experiences every week that's going to facilitate the release of this. You're going to get this energy onto the paper like you get your garbage and take it out to the curb. You're going to be taking out this energy to the curb of the sheet of paper and you're going to be leaving it there and it's going to be released. You're going to be surprised at the things that come up. You may find that there were things about this last year that you've forgotten about. Perhaps you suppressed or repressed or realizations like mine about letting go of this strange way I was looking at my spirituality that I wasn't even fully conscious of. Revelations will come to you. You'll find that resentments will surface. The biggest one for me are fears. I find that as I do this work, I release fears. And this homework is extremely important because we're going to build an energy and a consciousness together. And there's power in togetherness. And you're going to be supporting me And I'm going to be supporting you. And everyone on your screen is going to be supporting each other as we do this work. Group consciousness is such a powerful thing. We're working together, not only to help ourselves, but to free up the future of humanity. Because you are a particle point. You are uh, a stand-in for other people who are just like you, who perhaps don't have these tools. And as you free your consciousness and open up a more spacious atmosphere, a more spacious energy in you, you're going to be freeing up the energy for these other people as well. And it's going to speak to the universe. It's going to speak to your own subconscious mind and to the whole consciousness of humanity that we are ready to move ahead. We're ready to move into a new awareness. But we've all had difficult and disappointing experiences this past year, both collectively and individually. And we want to work on these in our collective consciousness to change those outcomes. So as I speak the questions aloud, you'll be writing them down and I'll be giving you the prompt so you don't have to work on it or think about it too much. But this is going to make it possible for you to release that which has been pushing you down and dragging you down and so that you don't have to drag these old feelings with you. I'm excited that we're doing this exercise together, and it's truly 
a group consciousness exercise that's not only going to benefit you, but the people in your workplace, in your family. It's going to free up the atmosphere for the people in your neighborhood. It's going to actually impact the whole of humanity. It's as if the infinite consciousness is saying to you, you are ready. Your soul has moved in evolution to the place where you are ready to move in consciousness and experience a whole new level of freedom. But you've got to do this work for yourself. Well, we're going to do this work in a moment. And um, there are questions that are, that are prompts, but don't feel yourself limited to any of those questions. And realize that there's so much that you're going to do to bring up from the depths of your soul this, this, this energy, and you're going to release it. So I'm going to ask you to get out your, your paper and your pen. And um, just write down, what do I feel most disappointed in about this year, this past year? So what do I feel? And the way you can start your journaling is actually to, to start off writing what I feel most disappointed about is, and then just start writing. So just do that right now. What I feel most disappointed about right now, about this past year is, and then just start free, freely, just write it out. What helps me is sometimes to say, I feel angry about this. Da, 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 da. I feel sad. I felt sad when this happened and I feel sad about this disappointing outcome. I feel resentful about what happened here. These are some of the prompts that you can use. So let's just do this for a moment. What I most felt disappointed about this past year. And then just let it rip, let it flow. And as you're doing this, just think about this calendar of the past year. January, February, March. What happened? What were your reactions to things on the world stage? Your nation, your family, your finances, your job, your loving relationships. family members. And the next prompt, which I'm going to phrase as a writing prompt, prompt, which is a, a little change from the question. The question is, what is the most difficult thing I had to do this year? But I would say the most, I would write the most difficult thing I had to do this year is, was blah, 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 and just write that out. This was difficult because this was the very hardest thing I had to do. This is how I felt about it. I felt afraid or sad or angry. Right now, how I feel about it. This was the toughest thing. And realize you're going to be able to come back to this. So don't feel you need to get everything out. Just begin the process. Because you're going to go back to it every day this week. Every day you're going to come back and do some more work. The most difficult thing I had to do this year. And perhaps some more disappointments will surface in your mind. So 
oh, that was such a disappointing thing. I expected a completely different outcome and look what happened. I don't like the way I responded in this situation or this other person responded or this situation that just seemed to pop in my lap. Just continue to, I feel angry about blah, blah, blah. I feel sad about blah, blah. I feel frustrated or resentful about this thing. When you write down those words, I felt angry or I feel angry or I feel sad about, you just you might not even know what you're going to write next. And it starts writing itself. So you've been looking at what's the most disappointing things, what you feel the most disappointed about regarding this year, and the thing that was the most difficult for you, the hardest thing for you. Sometimes I write the hardest thing for me. You might just write this right now. The hardest thing for me is, just write it down. It might be something really small. You might find that, you have not a whole lot of energy about the thing that you thought was the big deal. And it's this little thing. Somebody cut you off on the road or you saw a dead animal by the side of the road and it triggered this whole emotional response or is you just don't know what something is attached to. And now, and you can do whatever it is you feel like, whatever question you're on, but my, what I've decided about this is, the next question in the journaling is, uh, in, on the paper is, what decisions, attitudes, beliefs do you have about this year? But I usually say, what have I decided? What I have decided is, and I just write down the decision, that I've made about it. I've decided that I can't trust people or I've decided that I want to be over that or I've decided that I'm stuck here and I'm never going to get out of it. Write that down because you got to get it onto paper out of your subconscious mind or I've decided that I'm strong enough to face this. Whatever it is, what have you decided? And how is that? How are those decisions affecting your life? How are those decisions affecting your life? How, how's it showing up in you now and how might it affect your life in the future? And the next one is attitudes. What attitudes do you have about this past year? So my attitude is, and start writing. My attitude about this last year is, my attitude is, thank God it's over. I never want to go through that again. My attitude is, I've learned some things. I'm just giving you some prompts. And how's this attitude affected your life? How is it affecting your life and how will it affect your life? And now beliefs. What beliefs do you have about this year? What I believe about 2021 is, write it down. I believe that 
there's hope for the world, or I think, the, I believe the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Don't censor yourself, right? Whatever, whatever comes up, because it's your subconscious. You're aligning yourself. And how is this affecting your life, this belief? How might it affect your life going forward into 2022? And how has it affected you? How is it affecting you? How is it going to affect you? And so just kind of look over what you've written, see, see if it triggers anything else. See if there's something, oh my gosh, I never saw that before. I didn't even know I wrote that down. I often find it helps when, if I write fast so I don't think about it. Because I can think my way around anything. And just add to whatever it is you feel like adding to. Now, you can certainly continue to do this work as I'm speaking. And then I'm going to invite you to do this every day over the next week. And I really want to encourage your discipline with this. Encourage taking responsibility for releasing the year that's passed and taking responsibility for creating the year to come and getting new outcomes. I remember when Jane was teaching this, she said, I'd love to do this for you. I'd love to do this work for you so you don't have to do this work and, and go through all of this. But would that give anything to you or you would you get anything out of it? No, you have to do it yourself. This process is going to reveal something new about you. And you can keep writing while I'm talking if you want. You are going to be the one. You are going to be the one to win yourself back, to experience yourself in a new way, to move into a new year with a new energy. Jane's often talked about how the new year energy has a, a powerful vibration and we can actually plug into it and use it to affect major, massive changes in our consciousness that would be harder to achieve at a different time of year. So you're really taking advantage of the cosmic calendar, of the vibration and the energy of the universe. You are the one who's going to win your own freedom, this energy that's coming forth from within you. And you're going to discover something new because this new year is a milestone. You're a soul in evolution and you've been brought to the threshold of a new level of consciousness, a new expansion in awareness. And this work that you're doing is bringing you through that threshold, across that threshold, into a new room. It's labeled 2022, but it's really a new outcome for your future. But in order to do that, you have to clear your perceptions. You have to bring up from the depths of your soul those things that are limiting you. And write them down on a piece of paper. Just use a little ink. There's an old adage in spirituality, as above, so below. As above, so below. As you do this physical energy on the below level of the physical plane, you are freeing up energy as above on the higher spiritual dimension. And this exercise is going to move you beyond the opposites. Now, what do I mean by that? In the third dimension, in the body, mind, the, the physical ego experience that we're all having in this lifetime, we're in the opposites, the goods and the bads. And as we do the seven step method, we not only release 
the negatives, which we're doing here today, but also we're going to release the positives because we want to have a new experience that's beyond the opposites. You're moving into that which is beyond the opposites, which people call the now moment. And the now moment can't be experienced in the opposites because everything's one. There's no good, bad, right, wrong, like, dislike, love, hate. In the now moment, everything is one. But this week and today, we're doing the work to move ourselves into that oneness, which means moving beyond the opposites. So that you don't have to drag that old self, those old energies with you. You are in this consciousness, this vibration of possibility in order to move your soul into a new awareness. This experience we're going to have over the next four weeks is an experience of honoring yourself. You will honor yourself as you go through this experience. And it's going to give you an experience of uh, yourself as a greater growing, changing being, a soul in evolution. You came into this lifetime to grow and to change. And as you love and, you're, and you honor yourself by doing something like you're doing here today, and this is a real act of love for yourself, you find that it will love and honor your family, your workplace, your neighborhood, your loving relationships, everyone in your life. So let the old go and make a decision right now to open up to the new. Well, we're going to have a meditation uh, each week that's going to move us and move this energy forward because it's really not enough to just put it down on paper. You've got to then release it and let it go. And uh, I invite you to keep your sheets from this week and then add to them every day for the next week. But also, as the weeks go on and we're on other steps, you go back to this sheet and the other old sheets and add something to it. You may find that something new happens in your life that you need to do some work on. But you'll also find that as a growing, evolving soul, you may uncover a layer of something that needs to be released, a vibration and an energy that wasn't quite ready to be let go of. But the work that you've done here today and this week will allow you or give you permission to let it go. You will have brought yourself and prepared yourself to the place where, for the place where you can release this old vibration and energy. Well, I want to invite you to take a moment and, and have a meditation time with me. And I want to, um, we're going to go through these, these questions again, but we're going to do it in a little different way. So just close your eyes and imagine. Seven golden steps in front of you. And we're not going to be going up the steps today. We're just going to be doing this work in the presence of this energy, this consciousness of the seven steps. What am I? I am a soul. Yes, I am a soul in evolution. What does that mean? What this means is who I am is eternal and changeless, infinite and pure. And as my I am presence, my higher self takes dominion over my subconscious mind. And gives direction to it. I am energizing my life.
And so standing here in this meditative experience, I reflect on what I feel most disappointed about regarding this year. What made me feel angry? What do I feel disappointed about? Resentments, fears, sadness, just let it all come up. You are safe here. You can feel these feelings. Allow the experiences that you're reflecting on to come up one by one. And say goodbye to them. Be willing to let them go. Today, this week, this month, as we do this work together. And now reflect on the most difficult thing. And perhaps it's changed. Maybe something else comes up. What is the most difficult thing that I had to do this year that I had to go through? How do I feel about it? Sadness or frustration or energy of anger. Whatever this may be. And now, what have I decided? What decision, decisions have I made about all these different realizations that I've had, all these experiences I've had? And how, how is that decision affecting my life? How is it affecting me? And how's it going to affect me moving forward? Just let it go. I let it go. I let this decision go. Each one as it comes. My attitude about this past year. How do I feel about this past year? What's my attitude? And how's it affecting me? How do I feel or what are my attitudes about those situations that I've been journaling? And how might they affect me moving forward? I just let them go. Just release them. They have come to pass. And what are my beliefs about this past year and these events? And the things that I've journaled, what do I believe about them? Negative and positive beliefs, if they come up, whatever they are, and how are they affecting me? I let let them go one by one. I just release them. (laughs) 
And now I just take a look at the seven golden stairs once again. And I know that in our fourth class, we're going to actually take everything up all seven steps. But this is a powerful release we've just had. What I've experienced here today is moving the energy, moving it forward. And I am open and receptive to new revelations and awarenesses as I do this journaling this week. So that I can see what it is I'm holding on to and what has a hold of me. And I make a commitment to each day write something down, even if it's one little thing to take a little time with my pen and paper. And what I may find is that just writing down a sentence fragment opens up a door and I find something else that's connected to something else. But regardless, I am winning my soul's freedom, one step at a time. Now we come back to the presence of the rooms that we're in. And what we're experiencing is the chair that we're sitting in and feel the air upon our skin and just realize that we're here and we're now. When we were ready, we just open our eyes. And I want to thank you for being a part of this experience of winning your freedom. And having genuinely better outcomes in the year to come. Thursday night, we're going to have a support group at 7 p.m. And the link is found and you can always find that in your email that comes or on the center's website. And in that support group, we get a chance to really talk about what's going on with us. I'll tell you this last Thursday night, there was some real healing work that happened and it was a, a moving and transformative experience. I, I hope you can come on Thursday nights. It's just an hour. And you don't have to share. That's the thing about it. Uh, you, you'll get something out of what somebody else says. But uh, I hope you can come at 7 Eastern. Eastern. And um, we have the link in our chat room for our donations. Center for Enlightenment it is uh, we're all volunteers here, but we're, we're um, supported in doing the work that we're doing. Uh, by your donations. And um, this is going to be a, an interesting month. We're really going to have a different experience. Maybe we've never had an experience like this in our lives where at the end of the year, we didn't just usher in the new year heedlessly, thoughtlessly, but we actually use the energy of the new year and that vibration to complete the things of the past and to open up a new space for a new possibility. I'm really, I'm really looking forward. I'm really looking forward to seeing you on Thursday night, seeing you next Sunday when we're going to be doing the third step. But this week, just work on that fourth step, disappointments and difficulties. And keep adding to your list every day. Anyway, just know 
I love and support you and the Center for Enlightenment is within you. And we at the Center for Enlightenment that's here support you as well. And uh, I know it's going to be a great adventure, a great journey. Bye for now.